Welcome back to the lesson. Um, we are working on writing out net ionic equations in terms of spot testing. And we're going to begin again here with the acetate ion. The acetate ion with its chemical formula of C2H3 O2 negative 1 acetate. And we're changing the procedure spelled funny, uh, from our text. So make note that this is a change of the procedure from the written word. So we'll make the following note together. We're going to add 0.5 molar, and again, 1 mil is 5 to 7 drops into a test tube of sodium acetate. Again, this is the ion that we're checking for. Um, it can be in a small beaker or a test tube, really doesn't matter, but just a container. Next, we're going to add a mil of 6 molar HCl, and you're going to swirl that. And what you're looking for by wafting uh, the odor toward your nose very carefully is the smell of vinegar. So if we consider the molecular equation first, we're beginning with the solution of sodium acetate. This is the known sodium acetate, and reacting that with HCl hydrochloric acid. So an aqueous solution of sodium acetate, an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride called hydrochloric acid. Do you recognize the pattern? Sodium goes to chloride, hydrogen goes to acetate. So we produce sodium chloride, NaCl, and hydrogen acetate, which is called acetic acid, which we know from our titration experiment just last week is the major component of vinegar. So if indeed we are uh, experiencing a positive test for acetic acid, you are looking for the distinct odor of vinegar as we're forming the acetic acid. Now what's nice, these were all plus one, minus ones in terms of ionic charge, so the equation comes out balanced, just so we're clear on why, all plus one, minus ones. So this is what we would be labeling as the molecular formula. Let's turn that into ionic, complete ionic, dissociating the strong. Sodium acetate is indeed a water-soluble salt. It will separate into its aqueous ions. We get an aqueous ion of sodium and an aqueous ion of acetate. Ions carry their charges. Be sure that you're indicating the charges in these ionic equations. HCl is indeed one of our seven strong acids, so it will also separate from one another, giving us a hydrogen aqueous ion and a chloride aqueous ion. On the product side, again, table salt, sodium chloride, is indeed a strong electrolyte. It will dissociate or separate into its two ions, an aqueous ion of sodium and an aqueous ion of chloride. However, this particular acid is not on the list of the seven strong we are working to memorize. Therefore, it must be weak, and therefore, it stays together in the molecular form. A weak electrolyte stays together. So how about finding with me those spectator ions? I see one here. This is the sodium Na+. Circle that with me on your paper. And here again, a chloride. Spectators appear unchanged from the left to the right of our equation. And when we move from the complete ionic to the net ionic equation under your label for acetate. We take the hydrogen ion only because it's positive. Well, I write that first. It's an aqueous ion. And we will then add to it the acetate ion to produce acetic acid. The driving force of this reaction, the very distinct odor of vinegar. If you have a positive test, you should be able to detect the presence of vinegar through its distinct smell. Now remember again, the sodium acetate is the stock solution. You will run this full strength, diluted 9 to 1, and then again in a third test tube using your unknown. Our next equation, testing for the ammonium ion. Ammonium is our positive polyatomic ion, NH4 with a plus 1, ammonium. 
This, of course, doesn't appear anywhere in your text because we're adding the ammonium ion. We're going to take NH4Cl into a small beaker. So our first reactant, ammonium chloride. And again, just draw some up from, your, um, from the stock bottle and bring that back using a pipette. And the second reactant is sodium hydroxide. And again, five to seven drops of six molar NaOH. So two reactants in this equation. So the molecular equation is having us start out ammonium chloride aqueous plus sodium hydroxide aqueous. Notice the pattern will be double displacement. We have ammonium plus one. We have chloride minus one. Sodium plus one. Hydroxide minus one. Ammonium goes to hydroxide. Sodium goes to chloride. And let's use that double displacement pattern to predict our products. NH4OH is ammonium hydroxide. We'll need to revisit this product in just a moment. But we'll complete the first equation by writing down sodium chloride as the second product. But again, we're learning to recognize that when ammonium hydroxide forms, it is unstable and separates. And when it separates or decomposes, you're pulling out the water molecule and left with ammonia. And this is the driving force. The ammonia is a gas. So as soon as the NH4OH formed, it decomposes and the water and ammonia are left. There are one, two, three products. Here we did a double replacement followed by the decomp. Two patterns here, double replacement, then decompose the ammonium hydroxide. And so as you're conducting this experiment, as you swirl this together, probably a beaker is best to be able to get a, a good volume to be able to waft that smell. You're trying to detect the very um, distinct odor of ammonia. If you indeed have ammonia present, um, the positive test is the distinguishing smell. The ionic equation has us dissociate all of the strong electrolytes. Ammonium chloride is a water-soluble salt. Ammonium separates from its chloride, and we have two aqueous ions, NH4 plus and Cl negative. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It will indeed separate or dissociate into its ions, NH plus and OH negative. On the product side, we have two molecules here. We have the water, which is a molecule, two nonmetals bound together, and we have ammonia. Indeed, the driving force is our gas. And sodium chloride, again, is aqueous, a strong electrolyte, a water-soluble salt, so it indeed separates or dissociates is the correct vocab. What do we see as our spectator ions? I notice that I have sodium, Na+, and chloride, Cl negative. When I turn my complete ionic into a net ionic, I eliminate those spectator ions. I will show the ion of ammonium reacting with the hydroxide, notice I'm charging those, to create water and ammonia. This is the driving force. The odor of ammonia will represent a positive test. We've gone through each of those ions and talked specifically about um, each one of those. Looks like I have chloride left to do. Um, I think maybe perhaps these two slides got out of order, so I apologize. I probably talked about ammonium, even though it's written last, it will be the last one you conduct. You will move to chloride directly after your thiocyanate. So let's talk a little bit about the, um, the nitrate being added to a chloride. Yep, all right, so the chloride test. I'm going to back up and fill that one in. Cl negative chloride. The chloride test 
begins with adding nitric acid to sodium chloride. Now this is your stock solution. See we're testing for chloride and here it is in the ordinary table salt solution. So first part of the chemistry is to acidify, add acid, to the sodium chloride solution. And then three drops of silver nitrate. Now this is a procedure note. It may or may not affect you depending upon whether or not your particular unknown had tested positive for thiocyanate. So important note, if, if you had a positive test in your unknown for thiocyanate, you need to do this alternate procedure. And it just involves boiling it for a little bit. In order to prevent interference from the thiocyanate unknown, if if let me get this written if the thiocyanate is indeed in your unknown you must perform the additional steps however if your SCN negative test was not positive then don't perform these additional steps so it's just dependent upon what unknown you selected you must just do this additional step. It's not difficult. All it's telling you to do is uh, before you add anything to your um, unknown, before you add anything to your unknown, just simply make sure you take a little bit out, like a mill, seven, eight drops, add a little bit of acid to it, and put it in a water bath and let it boil for a while, maybe till about half of it is boiled out. Then take it out of the test tube water bath and then add your silver nitrate solution. What this is allowing us to do is to decompose any of the thiocyanate that is in your unknown that would interfere with the positive test of a chloride. So to repeat, if your unknown tested positive for SCN negative, do the additional steps. If your unknown tested negative for the thiocyanate test, you do not need to do the additional steps involving the water bath. The water bath has no additional chemistry to write about. It's just decomposing to make sure we don't have a competing reaction. So talk about the chemistry with me. We have a chloride to test for. First step says take a little bit of nitric acid, five to seven drops. HNO3 is aqueous, very strong acid, handle with caution. And you're going to react that with a solution of sodium chloride, NaCl. H goes to Cl, Na goes to nitrate. So we create HCl and NaNO3. We've acidified the chloride ion. Now, again, this very thing we just made, the chloride is what we're testing for, so it becomes the next reactant when we add the next ingredient, which was the 0.1 molar silver nitrate, AgNO3. H goes to NO3. Ag goes to Cl. And if you check your solubility table with me, you'll notice that AgCl is a solid precipitate. The driving force is going to be a white precipitate, a white solid known as silver chloride. Notice that this overall equation can be simplified. HC, or excuse me, HNO3, we started and ended. Anything that we start and end an equation with is known as a catalyst. It's placed into the reaction to ensure that the reaction goes to completion and to speed it up. We start and produce beginning ingredient, ending ingredient. Cancel them out and we have a catalyst. This equation also has something called an intermediate. Something that was made and then consumed intermediate in the very next step. Intermediate. That didn't come out very neat. Intermediate. We made it, we consumed it. So what's left is the overall net equation for our molecular. We get NaCl and AgNO3 are the two ingredients remaining on the left side of the arrow. On this side we have sodium nitrate, 
and silver chloride remaining where the silver chloride is the driving force. So here is the overall molecular equation. For the ionic equation, we have to dissociate the strong electrolytes. Sodium chloride is indeed a water-soluble salt. It separates into an aqueous ion of sodium and an aqueous ion of chloride. Silver nitrate. Nitrates are always soluble. It separates into the aqueous ion of silver and the aqueous ion of nitrate. Again, for the same solubility rule, nitrates are always soluble, so we separate sodium from nitrate, two aqueous ions that are separated from one another. But we know to leave together the solid driving force, the precipitate called silver chloride. To turn that ionic equation into the net ionic equation, we have to find the spectators. Circle them with me. We have sodium ion as a spectator. We have the nitrate ion as the spectator. Again, to remind ourselves, spectators are in the solution but did not undergo a chemical change. So the net ionic equation shows an aqueous ion of silver with an aqueous ion of chloride forming silver chloride solid. So the presence of the chloride is detected through the formation of a white precipitate. The knowns will form the precipitate. You are trying to decide if your unknown does the same thing. Now as we process this advanced study assignment on page 2526, as stated earlier in the video, I'm altering it from those pages. You do not turn in page 25 and 26. Alrighty, they make no sense because I altered the ions that we're testing, so I cannot ask you about ions that are not involved in the lab, so disregard page 25 and 26. Instead, on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to summarize the procedure followed, summarize each of the procedure that we described, write the molecular, complete, and net ionic equation for each step. Do it on a separate sheet of paper, and that will come in with your lab report form. The lab report form again was altered to exclude some of the ions and include the ammonium ion. If you wrote down everything that I had on these um, slides as we walked through, you have indeed completed your advanced study assignment. That separate sheet of paper with your lab, page 23, is your ticket out the door for next week's lab.